Hey everyone, and welcome to another Yogi Misfit session. My name is Danny Pomploon, and I'm your host. This is episode 36. 36. 36, not too bad. I can't believe I'm still doing this thing. Um, on today's show, I have Jane Austen. She is a local San Francisco teacher who is what I like to call the mama of the mamas. Um, pretty much everyone and anyone that I know that has been pregnant and still doing yoga goes to see her. Um, she does a lot of trainings both here in San Francisco and, and all over. Um, I kind of see her as, as, as the big mama of the mamas. I know she's a part of a really big community and she gives a lot of credit to her other mamas, but I get to see her often, or not often, but well enough that I get to you know reflect to her that stuff. Um, she's a badass, she's kick-ass, and uh, it was such a pleasure just having her on the show. I didn't want to stop talking to her, um, but I didn't want to have an hour and a half long episode. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and of course, if you enjoy the show, please leave a review. Um, it helps, and uh, share it with your friends. Enjoy the show. Jane Austen, welcome to the show. How are you? Uh, thank you, Danny. I'm doing well. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. How's everything going for you? Not too bad today. It's sunny in San Francisco, so no complaints. You say it's sunny, but it's also really cold. Ah, yes. A nip in the air. I like to complain. Well, I mean, I'm from Southern... I say this all the time, but I'm from Southern California, and so like it's below 74, and I'm like, it's freezing. Burr, right? burr. Put on a sweater. <laughs> I know. Yeah, exactly. Seriously. <laughs> I just got back from the, from the Midwest and that was cold, right? And it was, uh, it snowed out in Madison and I was out there teaching and it was like burr cold out oh, there. Oh yeah. My daughter lives out there. So I, I, I feel your pain. <laughs> I pretty, I pretty much stuck to, from going into a building to a car back into another building. Yeah. That's how you do it. Mr. Southern California. <laughs> that's how you do it in the I, Midwest. <laughs> I know. I don't have thick skin, man. <laughs> So Jan, I'm so happy to have you um, on the show. One, I uh, I absolutely adore you. I don't get to see you often enough, but every time I do see you, I, I mean, I absolutely just love it. And two, I get to send so many people your way. I always, um, anytime I have a mom in my classroom, any single time, one, I, I ask them about their their modifications and if they know anything. And then two, if if they're uh, if they're looking for for prenatal yoga or, or even post, I'm like have you talked to Jane Austen? And they're like, who's that? And I, 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 your title in my, in my mind is the mama of the mamas. <laughs> All right. I'll take it, Danny. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> you pretty much, I mean, it, it, you pretty much wrote the book on, on all things mama, I would say. Well, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. There's been uh, many mamas before me, but I'm definitely in a long chain of um, women who specialize in supporting pregnant women and new mamas. So yeah. It, it, Maybe I'm totally just fanboying. <laughs> oh, go on. <laughs> no, you're the best. No, 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 no. you are. <laughs> so let's, uh, I want to dive right in. I want to ask you like what, I know that this is, here's, here's what I love about you. And uh, again, we're not, <laughs> me and you are not like best friends or, but we, we see each other in passing sometimes and we, we, we communicate through multiple channels uh, together, I, I would say, mm -hmm. but what I love about you is like, you're just so into what you do as am I obviously, but you're like, I mean, I just see it in your eyes. Like you start, <laughs> you start seriously, you start talking about mom yoga and you just, you light up like, where did this all like, how did, yes, tell me. Please. I will, I will. But I will say that my kids make fun of me because whenever I start talking about this, they say my eyes get really big and they like bulge out of the sockets. So they're like, ooh, mom, start, talk about, start talking about childbirth and pregnancy so your eyeballs can pop out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's called enthusiasm, children. So I yeah. hope that uh, you have the same kind of love of some subject that is infinitely, infinitely interesting to you. Uh, because really, I, I really kind of fell in love with this work. Many years ago, in fact, in the early 90s, um, I was working as a doula and a midwife, and I just came upon the work very serendipitously. And, you know, once I started on this path, I just... Um, I just, I just found what fueled me and it's just been such an amazing journey to work with women in a lot of different capacities um, through attending births, but also doing childbirth education 
And, you know, in the last couple of decades, really focusing on using the tools of yoga to really support mamas and women in this really profound time of, of change in their lives. And what I find is that the tools of yoga are so perfectly adapted toward toward anybody going through any big transition. And, and a lot of people will come to yoga from, you know, maybe a place of maybe a challenging place, or maybe they just want to feel better, like their back hurts or, or whatever it is that brings them into the yoga room. I find mm-hmm. that um, the practice can just help, just help us feel better. And if they are undergoing a big change, which of course is happening for pregnant women, it just can be such an invaluable tool just to um, allow that transition to happen, maybe in a way that um, just just helps us traverse those waters with a little bit more, you know, with a little bit more ease. So, what, I guess where in this part or in this journey of yours, like where did the yoga part come in? So, so I didn't realize you were doing doula work beforehand. Oh yeah. Thought, and a midwife, I, I, not I, a doula and a midwife. So yeah, I was going to births. Okay. I was actually a midwife. I was doing primary care. Was, yeah. Wow. Amazing. And you know, to be honest with you, I was practicing yoga at one of the ashrams in the city and it was really sweet and I liked it. And it was, this was, you know, in the early nineties and it wasn't until Um, I got pregnant with my daughter and I remember practicing yoga with her um, in utero and just really tapping into something um, kind of bigger than, than what I like in the moment, I didn't really know what it was. I just knew that when I did the, the yoga practice, I felt better. I felt strong. I felt beautiful. I felt powerful. And what I didn't know then is that a seed was really being planted Right. Yeah, yeah, like in like, I mean, I literally remember like even a specific moment where I was in I was in warrior two pose. I remember what I was wearing. Like I literally remember what I was wearing. And I just remember just having this sort of profound moment of power. And you're you're, you're I'm a badass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and it was it was it was that it was that on one level, but it was also a, a sweet um, kind of acceptance because I was really mm-hmm. heavy. I was heavier than than I am now. And when I was pregnant, I was really big pregnant lady. So it wasn't like I was like ultra fit or anything like that. I was actually right. quite heavy, but I but I felt good. I felt really powerful. And any kind of oh shame I had about my body size or anything like all of that stuff just completely vanished and. You know, in retrospect, I realized that I wanted to create an environment where women could find that place of like that, not just profound power. Yeah, absolutely power. But just like, like, I I love this term, like this radical acceptance of like, this is, this is me and, and all my glory. This is me and all my warts and all. And, and I'm embracing it. And I feel good about it. And with this like juju, with this energy, like I want to I want to help bring that to all women. And and unfortunately, in our culture, because pregnancy is so pathologized, which just means, you know, you get pregnant and you see a doctor who specializes in illness. And so women often, I think and I see this all the time, they kind of shrink in their pregnancies. They just get smaller energetically because they're afraid or they're um, like not trusting themselves. So what I try to do in the in the yoga uh, studio and in the, the, the space where we're practicing is to create an opportunity for women to really tap in to that profound power, to tap into that place of acceptance and allow themselves to kind of expand into that power as they move through their pregnancy and into their, into their mothering. Because I think that that absolutely women's experience of pregnancy will absolutely inform their experiences of early motherhood and, Mm -hmm. you know, and potentially, you know, throughout their mothering experience. So, I mean, that's why I love it so much. It's such an incredible opportunity to create a space for the mamas and a sacred space. 
it's awesome because there's so I mean, you know, I, I actually had someone else talk about like a different type of like supporting community and stuff like that with with pregnancy. But one of the things that I like, I would never understand any of that stuff because I'm a boy and I can't get pregnant. And so there's a whole different like slew of things that goes with it. But what I, what, what I will say is I know from hearing it and just from even talking to like my sister and, and, you know, I was with her through the whole process. Like it's nice to be able to have some extra tools and techniques while you're going through something like you're literally changing, you're growing a baby human inside your belly. You know, <laughs> it's nice to have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like, that's a whole nother topic in itself. <laughs> there's, there's a thing inside of you that's growing. Um, but it's nice to have that support and also to have like, again, tools, tips and, and techniques to, to work through that stuff and to be able to process through that stuff. So you started learning, uh, you started, well, so you did the doula work beforehand, the midwife yeah. stuff, and then you were practicing yoga. Yeah. And I know now because I, you know, I, I follow your stuff, but I know you've written some material, some, some, some literature, you've done some, uh, some video work. You've pretty much, you did you take what you knew from the yoga practice, your study then from the doula work and then say, this really works. This really doesn't work on both accounts. Cause I know you've, you've created your own system of the way that you do things. A lot of people talk about it that I, that I know, like, uh, you know, there's, uh, Elvin who we all know at the front desk is always talking about how you've integrated your own kind of stuff into your yoga teachings. Like how did that stuff come about? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it was a perfect marriage really. And I, you know, when I decided that I wanted to teach prenatal yoga and, and I, and I, and I taught regular classes for a, a long time and I, and I love that too, but the, the prenatal and working with the new moms is really my passion. And what I did is combined all that I knew from the midwifery model of care, which is a holistic model of care that doesn't just look at like the physical body. Like when a woman goes to see an obstetrician you know, they pretty much just do a physical assessment of her once, um, you know, once she's been deemed safe for her baby, the prenatal visit is basically over. And so that's yeah. just looking at like the physical piece. But what we know is that there are so many things that are coming up for women in the pregnancy that having a place where they can actually address that can be really, really beneficial. So that's where the more holistic model of midwifery care comes in. So, mm -hmm. and how that relates to the, the yoga specifically is that I'm not teaching asana to pregnant ladies, right? It's not just the physical shape. And, and I know a lot of us, if we're, you know, teaching yoga that goes beyond just like, oh, this is where your thigh bones go in triangle pose. You know, if you're really like using yoga as a tool to go deeper and really tapping into all the tools of yoga, the model is much more holistic. So the prenatal classes are really, really different than teaching just the postures to a pregnant woman and just modifying the physical shapes. I mean, I when I do my teacher training, so I do a prenatal yoga teacher training and it is it literally, literally, I would say it's not just what you teach. Now, what you teach is important because you need content, right? You need to be able to impart information. But so sure. much yeah. about it, uh, uh, like in, from my perspective, to be a really good prenatal yoga teacher is how you teach and how you talk to women and how you give them tools to discover for themselves what is true for them. Because what happens for women is that when they get pregnant, they will often look outside of themselves for answers. Even like, you know, pro athletes, even like yoginis, like all like there's so much focus for these women to go outside of themselves to get information. And what I love about the yoga practice is that there is that absolute foundation the swadhyaya as we know is mm -hmm. one of the foundational tools that we use in yoga that brings the inquiry within so instead right. of like oh you're a pregnant woman do this 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 and this like the language around it is always like so what feels good to you right now what what um, doesn't feel good to you right now ask those questions to yourself and then make the decisions and choices that feel appropriate for you because from my perspective if a woman is really listening and paying attention to her body and and 
and not being guided by ego, not being guided by fear. But if she's really tuning in, it's my great, great, great faith that she will make choices that are right for her and for her baby. And that's going to be different for every woman. It's going to be different for every pregnancy. So the practice gives women this opportunity to kind of go in and inquire. So the the yoga practice is is presented in a way that's much more um, holistic as opposed to, oh, I'm pregnant. What shouldn't I do? You know, like that's like the thing, like people ask all the time. So they'll say to me, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm going to regular classes. What shouldn't I do? Like that's the number one question I get. Like the lady coming up to me who's maybe just, you know, ended – her vinyasa flow class and she wants to get some you know information from me and my and my my answer is never like oh don't do this 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 and this my answer is always to answer her with another question so what feels good to you right now you know so like right. bringing her back to that inquiry about what is true for her what makes sense to her and then from that place begin to build a real foundation for a practice that can serve her in that moment and in that you know w- with whatever she needs in that given moment cuz it can change you know it can change I lo- <laughs> yeah i love that you bring it back you bring not only the like not only the responsibility but also you pretty much hand the power back oh, and you yeah. say uh, like that's so great i never thought about that oh, but like yeah. you pretty much are Cause they're almost giving it away being like, well, what should I do? And you're like, you listen, right. like you actually, you de- that's so smart. I love yeah. that. I, I never thought about that, but you're really handing the power back and saying, this is you. Yeah. Like, it is, dive into it is you. I, that, you. Yeah, exactly. Danny. And then, you know, people will always say, listen to your body, listen to your body. And I'm like, okay, so yes, listen to your body. And then they always forget the second thing, which is, and respond accordingly. You know what I mean? And yeah, then, yeah, and yeah, totally. Take action. <laughs> From what you're discovering, because I think that, you know, people will say, oh, well, listen to your body, listen to your body. It's like, OK, like, yes, that's that's the beginning. But but give them that next level of empowerment, because I think that so much of the language that we use can be really disempowering, you know, to our students, especially in pregnancy, when sometimes women are just wanting to be told what to do because there's this sort of expectation if they do everything right in quotes that they're going to have some kind of guarantee of you know of a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby but but the truth is like danny that the sad truth is we are human and um you don't get that guarantee you know, yeah, totally. is, you can't, you can't promise that to anybody. You can't promise that to anybody, but sometimes women will kind of in the attempt to get that guarantee, they'll do like whatever somebody tells them to do with that right. expectation. And, you know, I, I can't take that on, you know, I absolutely can't yeah. take that on, but I can help guide her. I have tons of information, tons of experience. I'm glad to give her any insight that I can. But I also want her to feel like that she's that she's in the driver's seat. She's making the decisions and choices that feel most appropriate for her. And you know what? That's as good as it gets. Like that's yeah. that's all we that's all we can do. You know. Okay, I have two questions for you. You have one sentence to answer each. <laughs> yes. What's the hardest part of your job? Saying goodbye. Oh, so good. <laughs> yes. That's it. We don't even need any more show. That's the end of the show. Everyone go home. And cry <laughs> it's, you know, I get to be with them. So this is not the answer. This is just the other side. I get to be yeah. with them during this incredible, incredible time in their lives. And when, yeah. you know, when they go back to work, like if, if they're, if I'm so blessed to have them come to the postnatal classes that, you know, the pregnant mamas come to the class after the baby's born and, you know, they, and then they're, they're with me in that space. And during that time, and then they go back to work or they're moving away or, 
Um, or the baby starts to crawl, like, you know, the, the postnatal class is all pre-crawlers. Like it's, um, it's graduation day and it's a celebration and, you know, it's kind of closing the, the chapter. So I, um, you know, on that, on that chapter of their lives. So I would say saying, um, goodbye is the hardest part. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the, what's your fate? What's the, well, what am I trying to say here? What's your, what, what, I don't know why words are so hard. Um, what's, what's the most favorite part of your job? One sentence. When they come back. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Now I know some people are like one and done, like one and done. Namaste mama. That's awesome. But when she gets pregnant again, like it's, it's amazing to me because she comes back and like, I see her, like I haven't seen her in a couple years and she comes back into that room. Like it, it almost makes me want to cry thinking about it. So I know that she's committing to take care of herself. I know that she is coming back to this space because it meant something to her. I'm going to cry. <laughs> it meant something yeah. to her the first time. So she comes yeah. back and, you know, I have the great fortune of women coming back for their second pregnancies and their third pregnancies and periodically. No yeah. I had a woman today. She, oh, no she has a 10 year old. She has a five year old and she's pregnant. That's yeah. Awesome. And like I saw her and I was like, yay. So, yeah. you know, I like I said, I love I love one pregnancy and one and done is is brilliant and perfect for some families. But really to be able to 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 share the experience again is really, really um, special. Yeah, that sounds, that's, that's, I mean, it sounds special. I always say like, you know, I, I teach so that my students don't have to keep coming back. You know, that's like the end goal. So I want them to like, you, you know, discover, it sounds like the worst principle in the world. I'm a yoga teacher. I get paid to teach students and, and me and me saying, I want to teach them to never to come back, but you get where I'm going. Right? We want all our students to always be dependent on us. Although it is very nice. Yeah. Visit, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And you know, I had this woman th- today who said, you know, she was did yoga with me through two other pregnancies. And she said, and women tell me this all the time, that they kind of fell in love with yoga in the prenatal class. And then they continued, you know, and found yeah. a teacher, you know, without screaming babies in the room, <laughs> without, it, without yeah. a big old belly. And, you know, when she said that to me today, I was like, oh, brilliant. Like that, if I can help usher women through the door gently be with her during this really sweet profound time and then she can discover yoga beyond me like oh hallelujah hallelujah and you've got you've got so now you have i know you have a couple books you have some dvds you do audio classes and then you have teacher trainings as well you do a little bit of everything i do a little bit of everything now danny i don't have any books that's jane austen the author (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm writing a manual. Maybe oh, you're just psychic. Maybe you're just psychic. Well, this this is awkward. <laughs> so wrong topic, wrong uh, podcast. See you later. No, <laughs> no I um, I thought you had re- no. Well, maybe I, I you know I thought you had written for some of the yoga tree stuff. I know you did. Yeah, well, I've like, some- uh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I've done articles and stuff here and there, and I've been interviewed for lots of different publications. I. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, Linda Sparrow wrote a book and I, I contributed material. So she has a great book, the Yogini Mama book that, that Linda Sparrow wrote a couple years ago. So, yeah, there's okay. definitely I've been contributing, but I'm I'm writing down my manual for my mama tree training. But I nice. am also. Yeah, I've done a, a few online offerings. I'm doing some um, uh, I, some some app phone app stuff through move with which is a relatively new company so i'm, I'm kind of here and there people can find me at jane austen yoga.com and i've got awesome. J- jane austen a-u-s-t-i-n <laughs> not the author not the author <laughs> not the, although i do love her so if you want me to talk about jane austen i'll do that anytime <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Oh, on Jane next, Austin, on, on Jane Austin, Austin on Austin. <laughs> it's so, it's so meta. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh man, Jane, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show today. I really, I mean, I can't thank you enough. It's been so much. I, I adore you uh, uh, so, Danny, so much. Thank you so much. I feel that way about you too. Just your sweet, 
open energy. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to, you know, talk to, to the people that follow you and your students, because I think the, the, I'm virtual and I, I always enjoy seeing you when I do. So namaste oh. brother. <laughs> no, you're the, no, you're the best. <laughs> oh, this again. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, Until uh, the next Yogi Misfit session, this is Jane and Danny saying goodbye. Au revoir. <laughs> Au revoir.